Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today's video is about a product called Optics by a company called Boris FX. They make motion graphics and visual effects products that are used in movie making, but they also have a photo product. And they reached out to me recently and asked if they could sponsor a video on my channel and have me share this with you all. I took a look at the product and I was like, yeah, this is fun. I want to talk about this. So Thank you to the Boris FX team for sponsoring this video. And I want to walk through, I'm going to do kind of a high level overview, show you some of the cool and interesting stuff that you can do with this product that honestly I haven't seen being able to do in any other app. It's just impressive and amazing. And they have some really cool technology that if you enjoy doing some creative things with your photo, uh, like I do, I think you're going to love it. The product works as a plugin to Lightroom or Photoshop also works in standalone mode, which is how I'll be using it in this video. And if you are interested, they gave me a 20% coupon to share with you all. There is a link down below along with the coupon code. Let's get into it. Here is the basic interface. And of course, if you want to open a file, you just go to the open menu. And I'm going to start with this streetcar photo from San Francisco. And I want to walk through a little bit of a UI tour. And like I said, do a little bit of a demo of how this thing works. Now, one of the great things about this product is it's got amazing masking and layers capabilities. So layers are on the left hand side, along with different masking, opacity and blend mode options. Your photo, of course, is front and center. On the right hand side, you have a histogram. And then down below, you've got filters. And on this left side, you've got presets. So there's a lot of power and control that you get over your photos in this app, including with all the visual effects, some of which I will touch on in this video. But again, this is going to require me to come back and do additional videos to really walk through some of the cool and interesting things you can do. I will touch on them briefly in this video. Generally, how I start with the photos, I'll come down here and I'll go into color and that's a tab that gives you all these different categories of options. I'm going to click on develop. And the first thing I want to do is come in here and maybe just adjust the temperature a little bit, maybe a little bit bluer, maybe a little bit of a tint adjustment, maybe a little bit of vibrance and perhaps lift the exposure slightly by brightening the photo. You can see you've got a lot of parameters to work with on any one of the tools that you use, but I'll get into parameters in a little bit more depth later, but you can always turn this layer off by looking looking at it and there it is the before and there's the current state. I like that, but this is where I add more layers. Each adjustment is effectively its own layer. So I'm going to go ahead and click plus it adds a new layer. And one of the categories that gives you a lot of different creative options is light. I'm going to click on light. And for me, one of the favorite sections here is lens flare. You can see as I click on each category up here, and then I click on the subcategories. It also gives me all these different options on the left hand side, which are fully customizable. If you notice on this right hand side, parameters are now really detailed. It gives you so much control. And so I'm going to use this anamorphic too. And what I want to do is drop this anamorphic lens flare on top of the streetcar light uh, headlight. And so I'm going to do something about like that. I'm going to pull this in so it's a little bit less in your face, make it a little bit more subtle, but I love those anamorphic lens looks. And you might think, well, I can get an overlay or a texture in other apps and stick it on there. But the amount of customization that you have here far exceeds anything that you could do with a texture simply because you have all these parameters. You can see there's brightness, there's length and thickness. There's so many things you can do. Again, I'm not going to customize everything in this video, but I wanted to show you that and point out that it's very different than just having a texture texture overlay. Now let's say I like that. I'm going to add another layer and let's say I want to get one more lens flare. I'm going to click on the lens flare category and this time I'm going to go down here and just scroll and find there's one other that I like. Here it is. It's called Outland. And what I want to do is I want to put this on top of that street light. So I've got that in place. Once again, I want to shrink it a little bit like I did the other one. So it's not over the top. By the way, you can always turn off this overlay if you want to hide the control just so you can see what you're doing. And there's also a comparison screen here where I can do this sliding window to see how my photo looked before and how it looks now. I'm going to click that to hide that. I've got a couple of other quick things I want to do on this image. So once again, I'm going to add a new layer. This time I'm going to go to the category called render and this subsection called night sky. Now, as you can see, once again, there's lots of different options here for adding stars to your sky, but I'm going to go with the default option. But this is where I wanted to show you the ability to do some masking. They have some very powerful masking tools. And to do that, you just make sure you're on the layer that you want to mask and you click on this button and you can see you've got a gradient, a spot, all these different options. I'm going to go with easy mask. 
click on that. Up here in this top menu, you can see I'm on paint foreground. So this is where I come in and I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe some green across the sky. And then I just click on paint background and this is where you do red. So basically green is selecting it and red is deselecting where the adjustment goes, right? So I'm telling it, put the night sky only in the sky because that makes sense. I don't want it across the entire photo. So I've basically done the red and green, given it a little bit of information. I come up here to this gear icon, generate mask, and you can see it's done a remarkable job. Let me hide the overlay and you can see now the stars are just in the sky and no longer in the cityscape. So lots of power and control with the masking. And as I showed you, there's plenty of other options, not to mention on each layer, you have opacity and blend modes as too. So again, lots of customization you can do. But I'm gonna wrap this one up real quick. One more layer. And this time I'm going into Film Lab. And again, this is another section where you have so many creative options. I'm gonna go into Film Stocks. And if you look at this, I mean, you can just see there are so many different Film Stocks that you can go through. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna go into this drop down menu. And they actually have some of them categorized by movie looks. I'm gonna click on that. And you can just see here, there's so many different options for applying a film or movie look to your image. Again, this is a company that makes video enhancement and graphic effects plugins for making movies. So they have lots of intelligence around these things, lots of customization, and frankly, it's lots of fun that you can have. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna get Stranger Things, a little bit of fan of those kids. Uh, it's just a great show. So I'm gonna apply Stranger Things but it's too heavy handed, right? It's too blue, it's too dark. So this is where I come into opacity. I'm just gonna drag that down. Something in the mid 40s I think looks pretty good. Let me show you, turn off the layer here. There it is before and there it is after. So that's my entire edit of this one. And let me just show you how quickly and easily I was able to do some things that are harder or impossible to do in other apps. A couple of different lens flares, some basic customization, a quick sky replacement effectively by masking in the stars, and then a film look on top of it. So I think it gives me a nice looking image, but now I wanna show you some of the other powerful things you can do, including using the parameters. I'll do that on a different image. Let me show you that. Okay, this is an image that I downloaded from Unsplash. I'll put a link to the artist down below. I think it's a beautiful picture. And first thing I wanna do though is crop it. There's a little bit too much foreground for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and crop that out, hit the gear icon to finish, and I've got a cropped image. Now I already showed you all the film stocks and things like that, and there's a massive amount of them that, again, so many options, that's what I love about this product, so many creative ideas and things that you can do. But another thing that's really different and unique and I think incredibly interesting is what they call particle illusion. And this is a new feature in this year's version of Optics. As the name implies, it gives you the ability to add particles. It could be snow, it could be fire, it could be lots of different things, and then customize it. Again, very different than a typical texture overlay, much more advanced, much more control. Let me show you. There's lots of different categories as you can see here, there's emitters, there's explosions, there's fire. I'm gonna do something simple here. I'm gonna go in and get some snow. So click on that. Once again, lots of different options over here. I'm gonna go with this simple snow area two, and there you go. Now you take a look at it and you might think, well, it doesn't even fit in the photo. That's where you come into this parameter section and customize how it looks. I'm gonna start with world transform and master scale. And all I'm gonna do is drag that to the right and you can see it basically expands to cover the entire photo. Again, more control than you would have as a, you know, compared to a typical texture overlay. I'm gonna click into particle properties because I wanna adjust a few things here. The first one is I wanna take the size down. If I take this to the left, you can see how the snow is kind of shrinking in size. Again, power and control, I like that a little bit better. It's a little bit more of a gentle snowstorm as opposed to a more heavy handed, bigger snowflakes. Now you can also do things like time. It's defaulting to eight, but let me show you if I drag time to the right, you can see, again, it's almost like an excerpt from a movie because time is basically showing the snow falling. And so it's kind of like a screen grab for lack of a better word. Uh, I'm gonna go back to, I think it was on about eight or nine, but I wanted to show you that because again, it's just powerful and fun control over how this particle illusion, this snow is applied to your photo. What makes that unique is it's never gonna look the same way twice. Unlike applying a texture and maybe doing blend modes or resizing it or something like that. If you have a texture and every other person has that same texture, it's hard to get a unique look. 
this is actually cheaper to be able to do this and it gives you more control because you have so many options in terms of particle illusions like snow, fire, fireworks, lightning. I'll show you some of these things and the amount of control is just, it's, uh, it's unparalleled. This random seed setting here, if I click that and drag that, you can see it kind of randomizes that snow pattern, which I like. So again, more customization. And if I forward on life, you can see it shows you basically, again, it's almost like a screen grab of the life of the snow as it's falling. And the number is similar as well. I can increase or decrease the amount or the intensity of that snow by changing the number. I'm gonna go back to wherever I was. I'm gonna maybe drag that down a little bit more, but I wanted to show you that because that's one of the cool differentiating features about optics that I think you don't get in other apps. Very, very fine detailed control to truly customize and get the image looking the way you want it to look. Let's say I like that and I wanna go do one more thing. I'm gonna add another layer and this time I'm gonna go into render. So I showed you particle illusion and by the way, I'll come back and do some more videos about this because honestly, I'm just having so much fun. I'm gonna click on render and what I wanna do is get ultra zap, which as the name implies is lightning. So let me click on the overlay so I can see the controls. And as you can imagine, power and control, I can come in here and customize how this lightning strike is applying in my photo. I can adjust the curvature of it and how it's falling in the image. I can just do a lot of different things. Let's say I wanna do something about like that. In fact, I wanna take the end of it and actually drag it out of frame, I can do that as well. Now, as you would expect, lots of different options over here, and again, all fully customizable, but I'm gonna go with this option. I like that quite a bit, but I wanna show you a couple of things here in the parameter section, which again, gives you control over the actual lightning bolt, making it very different than just a texture overlay, as I've said repeatedly, but I wanna drive that point home because this is more control than you're gonna get compared to just using like a lightning bolt overlay. Here you've got bolt width, so I can increase or decrease that if I want to, I love that. You've got this curve here where I can increase or decrease the amount of curve and you know make things a little bit more flexible. I like this tapering of the end where at the very end of that bolt, I'm kind of tapering it so it's almost like it's fading a little bit. Or if I go the other way, you can see how it's uh, a little bit more thick and less transparent. I'm gonna go back just a little bit there. And I've also got the ability to come in and change the color. It's very white at the top and blue at the bottom. As you can see, the start and end colors are different. So I can just click on end color. I have this option here and I'm just gonna come in and make that white as well. So that they're basically both white. I wanted it to be fully white across the entire frame instead of blue. But again, more power, more customization. So let's say I'm happy with that. I'm gonna wrap this up with just another film look. As I said, this film lab just gives you so many different options. I'm gonna click on film stocks. Once again, I'm gonna go into movie looks. You've got cool things like Blade Runner, this Kill Bill Volume 1. That actually looks pretty cool. I like that quite a bit. And again, turn off the layer here if you want to. There's before, there's after. And if you want to, adjust the blend mode or the opacity. Maybe I'll keep that one, but I'm gonna pull the opacity down slightly. And I'm gonna do one more thing that I wanna show you that I think is just super fun. So add a new layer and I'm gonna go back to particle illusion because it's so interesting. And I'm gonna go to this HUD GUI. HUD stands for heads up display. GUI is graphical user interface, of course. If you click on that, you will see you've got all these different overlays that you can fully customize to really create an interesting and unique kind of feel. You could create a really sci-fi looking city if you wanted to. I'm just gonna take this number I'm gonna put this over here just to give you an idea of what you can do. Stick that number there. And once again, you've got particle properties. So if you drag random seed, you will see that those numbers are changing, right? So again, it's power and control and it's very different than just a standard texture overlay. This is actually changing the numbers. So you could do all kinds of different things. You can see how this would come into play in a sci-fi related scene or like a modern sort of fantastical cityscape. I'll come back and do more stuff, but I wanted to show you all the power and control that you have over images using Optics by Boris FX. I'm just having a lot of fun with it, to be honest. I hope this has given you a good idea of what you can do. Lots of power, lots of flexibility, lots of control. I'll be back because I'm having so much fun with it. If this is interesting to you, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below about the kind of things you'd like to see me do. Because like I said, I will be back. I'll do more videos about Boris FX Optics because it's just so much fun. That's it for this one, my friends. Thanks again to the team at Boris Effects for sponsoring this video. I'll be back soon with more. Appreciate you guys watching. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you really soon. And until next time, adios.